Okay, let's talk about finding the LCM. And the LCM stands for lowest common multiple. And we're going to go ahead and find the lowest common multiple of these two numbers here in a second. And we'll do another example. I'm going to teach you a couple different ways to think about finding the LCM. But the LCM is often uh, confused with the LCD, which is the lowest common denominator. But in actuality, what we're learning here with the LCM and how to find the LCD are pretty much identical. Okay, so uh, I'm going to get into all of this and more. But first, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tampa Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the most robust, comprehensive, effective online math help programs there is. So whether you need to take a full math course or need um, support and assistance in your current math course, my program can help you out. But I'll, leave, I'll let you be the judge of that. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this uh, video. But just very quickly, my math help program, what I have in there is full comprehensive lessons, far more what I do on YouTube, and I literally show you how to solve thousands of problems, okay? All video-based. Nothing's more frustrating to math students to do problems, have an answer key, but not know how these problems, you know, not understand the solution. Yeah, you might know the answer, but if you don't know how the problem was solved, well, then you won't be able to <laughs> improve your problem-solving skills, and that's what you need to do to be successful in mathematics. But uh, another thing you need to be doing to be successful in mathematics is to be taking outstanding math notes. Over decades of teaching math, there's one rule that I have seen over and over again, and that is those students who take the best math notes generally have the best math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who struggle in math, I would say, hey, let me see your math notes. And they'd be like, eh, I don't really have my math notes, or they're kind of sloppy or disorganized, or whatever the case might be. So if you want to start really helping yourself learn math, focus on taking great notes, not good notes, like great notes, okay? But in the meantime, you know, if you're not there yet in terms of your note-taking skills, you need something to study from. So I actually offer notes, very comprehensive, detailed math notes. I'm going to leave a link to those in the description of this video. Those would include pre-algebra, um, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. In case you want to check those out or my math help program, you can uh, just follow the links in the description. Okay, so let's get into the LCM, lowest common multiple. Of course, I said it's related to um, the lowest common denominator. And this is stuff that, you know, if you think back on it, you know, if you ask yourself, where did you learn or when, would, when did you start studying about this, LCM, LCD? Well, this was back like in elementary school, okay? So we kind of like go back in time. You know, you have your primary school, elementary school, then middle school, uh, then high school mathematics, I'm not sure where you're at, then obviously in college, uh, let's say college mathematics, here, okay? So you might say, well, the LCM, we only need that like in real basic middle or like elementary school kind of co problems, right? Like the one we're going to do here. Well, not that's not the case at all, okay? This concept of the LCM or the LCD goes all the way through. It just continues to, to uh, be used on and on and on because we're talking about uh, generally, uh, generally dealing with fractions, okay? And we need to, in order to find the LCD, which is a critical skill, not only in elementary basic arithmetic mathematics, but also in algebra, in more advanced algebra, what we learn here about the LCM, which is part of finding the LCD, is absolutely critical, okay? So this is, again, another um, reminder that the math that you learn in elementary school or middle school, wherever you might be, is going to follow you. This math builds upon itself, okay? And algebra is really um, doing arithmetic with, with variables, and variables are just number of placeholders. So you got to understand your arithmetic, okay? So let's get into this, and uh, we'll use this basic example, 8 and 20. I'm sorry, we'll do that here in a second. I'm, I got another basic example here. Let's find the LCM of 5 and 7. Now, again, what is the LCM? Well, it stands for lowest common multiple. Hmm. So let's just kind of think about this for a second. We want to find the lowest, okay, the lowest, all right, common. We need something in common, all right, common. What does that mean? Well, if something, if two people 
have something in common, right? Then they share the same attribute about something, all right? So that's the word common, and then multiple, all right? So multiple. If you want to understand a lot of these, you know, terms or concepts, just think about, you know, these acronyms for a second, lowest, common, multiple. Now, of course, we need to understand what these um, are referring to. So we have to understand this word multiple, okay? So let's just think about what that means. Well, multiple means, it's very simple. Let's take the multiples of five. So if I go, all right, five times one, that's five, right? So um, this is a multiple, five times one, uh, five is a multiple of five, okay? Five times two, okay, is 10, right? That's another multiple of five. Five times three, you kind of get it here, is 15, is another multiple of five. So we start taking the number five and we just start multiplying it by uh, one, two, three, four, five, you kind of get it, right? So these are the multiples of five. And of course, this goes off uh, infinitely. So five times one is five, five times two is 10, five times three is 15. All these guys here are multiples, okay? So you get the picture, right? So these are the multiples of five and they continue on infinitely. Now, uh, let's take a look at the multiple uh, multiples of seven, okay? So here's seven, seven times one is seven, seven times two, 14, seven times three, 21, et cetera, right? So this goes on and on and on. All right, so now we're looking at the multiples of both five and seven, all right? So what do we want? We want a common multiple. We want a, a common multiple. So what does that uh, mean? Well, we want to find uh, we want to find multiples that they have in common, all right? So let's let's kind of look at our list here. So five and seven, what multiples do they have in common? Well, they have a seventy right here in common, right? So uh, 70, right, is a multiple of 5, and 7, all right, 7 times 10 is uh, 70 over here is also a multiple of 7, okay? So these guys here, these are common multiples, right? So if I, the question was, find a, not the lowest common multiple, find the common multiple of 5 and 7, we'd say, hey, I found a pair, uh, 70, right? Because they, sh these, they have, uh, both 5 and 7 have in common this multiple. However, what we're trying to do is find the lowest common multiple. So we can't just kind of be like, all right, we're done. Let's just kind of look through the list here and see if there is a number that's lower than 70. So we're kind of scanning through like, oh, 35. They both have 35 in common. Okay. So they're, these guys are multiples. They're common multiples. And in fact, if we looked at the, all the multiples uh, lower than uh, 35, that's it. There's no there's no other common multiples. So these two here, these two numbers, or this number, 35, is the lowest common multiple um, between or uh, amongst five and seven. Okay, so the lowest common multiple of five and seven is 35, right? 70 is a um, common multiple, but not the lowest common multiple. Now, what you know, what value does this have? Well, if we're doing a, let's say some sort of fraction, let's say two over, oh, I don't know, let's say 70 plus one over uh, 32, okay? So if I'm gonna add these two fractions, what do we need to do? Well, we need to find the lowest common denominator, all right? All right, and if you don't understand this, you can look at my LCD number, but just hopefully you have a pretty good knowledge of adding fractions. But here, these two uh, denominators are not the same. So we're going to have to rewrite these fractions such that they have the lowest common denominator down here. Now, when we take a look at these two numbers, 70 and 32, what we're really doing is we're finding the LCM, okay, of these two numbers. And when we find the LCM between 70 and 32, that in fact is going to be the LCD. Okay, so that's kind of where the um, application of the LCM comes into. So when you're learning about the LCD, what we're really doing is finding the LCM of those numbers in the respective uh, denominators. Okay, all right. So just so you understand that there is value here in learning the LCM. Okay, so. Um, how can we find the LCM between two numbers? Well, we can list out the multiples just as we did here, 
and just scan through the multiples and look for common multiples and just uh, identify the lowest common multiple. So that's one approach. Let's take a look at another problem here. And this is the one that I had up there on top, and that's the LCM between 8 and 20. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, look at the multiples. Here's 8 uh, and 20, and here's the list of multiples. So 8 times 1 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, etc. So here's all the multiples of 8, and of course this goes on and on and on. And then the multiples of 20, uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, you kind of get it. Multiples of 20. So let's just quickly scan the list here. So is there a 20 in this list? Nope. Is there, we could see an 80, right, right off the bat. These are definitely common multiples, but we're not sure yet if these are the lowest common multiples. So we're looking, oop, I see a 40, I see a 40. So 40 is in fact the lowest common multiple uh, between 8 and 20. Okay, so again, this is one approach. But now let's take a look at a more sophisticated approach. And you need to understand this um, just for more advanced kind of math. So we can take a look at these two numbers, 8 and 20. And let's write each of these numbers in their prime factors. Now, if you're not familiar with a factor tree, this is called a factor tree. Well, then here's your first introduction to it. So 8 we can write as um, uh, the product of 4 times 2. Now, 2 is a prime number. So anytime you have a prime number in a factor tree, uh, just go ahead and circle that number. But uh, 4, we can continue to factor into 2 times 2. So now I have no more things I can factor because all of my little factors down here are prime. So 2 times 2 times 2 is um, this product is equal to 8. So 8 I can write as 2 to the third power, okay? Now let's take a look at 20. Now 20 I can write as 4 times 5. 5 is a prime number. 4 I can continue to factor as 2 times 2. And now these two guys here are prime numbers. So 20 I can write as 2 times 2 times 5, okay? This is prime factorization. And 2 times 2 is 2 squared times 5, all right? So 20 is the same thing as 2 squared times 5, right? And 8 is 2 cubed, okay? So I'm looking at prime factorization. Now, let's go ahead and find the LCM. How do I do this? Well, what we can do is look at all the, uh, the, prime, factor, uh, the prime factors of each respective number here, and we have to kind of have each one represented. So let's talk about we have 2 cubed, and 2 squared. So we have to have some power of 2 represented. Okay. Now I have 2 cubed and 2 squared. So I have to have 2 uh, represented. Now which 2? Should I take the 2 squared or 2 cubed? Well, you're going to take the highest power of this factor. Okay. So 2 is a factor, but we have 2 to the third and 2 to the second. So whatever the highest power is, we need to represent that in our LCM. So that's going to be 2 cubed. Okay. Now, looking at uh, other factors, I have this other prime factor, 5, right? So that has to also be part of our LCM, okay? So here, if we could look at these two numbers, I have 2 and 5 as my prime factors. This is 2 cubed. This is 2 squared. I always have to take the highest power of that particular um, base number, 2, okay, and 5. So 2 cubed times 5 this will be my LCM. So what is that? 2 cubed is 8, right? 2 times 2 times 2. And uh, so that's going to be 8 times 5, which is 40. Okay, which of course, right here, is the same as uh, us identifying that in the list of multiples. Now, you know, you're not going to want to... Uh, this is good to kind of show you the concept of finding the LCM. And you could do this on basic problems, but... Using factorization is really where you want to go, okay? This is kind of what you really want to understand. So you want to practice your, um, you know, prime factorization. And in algebra, we find the lowest common multiple, lowest common denominator using uh, factorization and powers, etc. okay? But it, you know, right now, if you're, you know, just kind of doing basic arithmetic and you feel like, well, you know, this might confuse you a little bit. Well, no problem. At least if you understand the concept of the multiples and just kind of searching things out, then you have at least that technique to help you 
identify the lowest common multiple. Okay, again, not to be confused with the lowest common denominator, but um, hopefully this video has helped you out. Now, if it did help you out and if you enjoyed it, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, you like my teaching style, please consider subscribing. I've uh, been on YouTube for 10 plus years at the time of this video. I literally have hundreds and hundreds of uh, math videos, various levels, basic to advanced, organized in various playlists on my channel. And I'm producing math videos all the time. You probably have noticed that I love to teach math. Okay, so if you love my teaching style, or if you like my teaching style and you understand my mathematics, then I can really um, help you out. But uh, again, my best resources are going to be found by following the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.